Hey guys, welcome to Casper LBP. I'm Casper and today we're going to continue our exploration of materials and we're going to focus on special materials. And these are things, uh, materials that you can work with that don't act like your normal materials, like this invisible floor I'm on. So let's head on over to create mode and check it out. Okay, welcome to create mode, and here we are in uh, Andy's room again, and we are going to check out our goodies bag in the materials menu, and it looks like our special materials is right here. If you don't have this screen, make sure to hit on uh, this one of these headings here, like these, and then just click the square button. And then just make sure that you're on category. And then that should bring this up at the top here of the page. Um, you've got basic materials and then special materials. So let's start with this first one, which is called the camera excluder. So we bring this up. And basically what this does, it's pretty easy to understand. Um, it's probably a little bit more difficult to understand where you would use it in a level. Uh, but there might be some times that you want to have. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And you know how as we walk around here, the camera basically follows me wherever I go. There's like an invisible cameraman here following my actions. But when I enter this zone here, the camera stops until I exit the zone. So then basically, you can stop the camera from tracking you, especially if you're doing something where inside your level it's a little bit more confusing and the camera keeps trying to wing around and, and try to keep track of you and it's just making it more annoying so that's kind of a good tool to use for that. Uh, the next thing here is dark matter. Actually I'm going to put dark matter and light matter in the same little category. Let's go back here. We've got light matter because they're both pretty much act the same. Uh, before Little Big Planet 3 you didn't have the ability to have this up at the top here in your menu, the physics properties, static or dynamic. I mean, I could set this to dynamic and we're in play and these are just floating here because that's what they're designed to do. You don't have to tell them to be static because they automatically are. So you can hang things from these and that's what you used to have to do in some of the old uh, little big planets. But I imagine they kept this in here because a lot of people have already made levels that are full of this stuff, hanging all of their uh, static devices from them. So, so anyway, you can use these. Um, there's, you know, a little bit of tweaking that you can do. Let's go into one here. Basically, this animation that makes it look kind of liquidy. Um, you can speed that up and make it really liquidy. Um, you know, or you can just completely stop it or reverse it. So, you can use these for effects as well. So uh, not too special anymore. Um, the dissolve is uh, always pretty cool. Um, I'm actually going to, let's do it this way. Let's pick something that we can make out of our dissolve material. Let's say a fish. There we go. So we've got a fish. We'll put him back here. And basically the dissolve material just means that once you've got something that sends a signal to this fish, any kind of input will make this material instantly dissolve. So let's, I would put a switch on here, um, but instead of getting into electrical, let's just call it a player sensor. So I'm going to put a player sensor on here. Before I stick it down, I'm going to hit the square button to tweak it, and I'm just going to make it so that when This is basically how close someone has to be for it to sense them. So I'll actually make it so you need to be pretty close. And it definitely needs to be in within this range of layers. So that's good. 
So we'll back out of here. And we'll see how this works. Now if I'm floating around, it's not going to actually sense me. I've got to actually drop down out of hover mode. And come walking up here. Oh, I know why it's not working. First of all, it's not even on there. Because I tweaked it, but then I never stuck it down. So, X. And see, it senses me there. But, you see when it lights up? senses that I'm there but it's not dissolving it because I don't have it connected so it needs some kind of wire to say what it needs to do so now it's connected to the fish so now we walk over by the fish Ta -da, it's gone so that's our dissolve material so you can use that for a lot of things if you need to have things disappear walls can disappear you know, entire levels can practically disappear to reveal another level underneath. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with the dissolved material. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is our hologram material. So this is kind of funky. I'm going to keep doing this with the sticker template just because it's kind of fun to do that. Here we'll have the fish, fish bones. We'll make it out of hologram material. I'm going to make it flat so that it's a single plane like this. Actually, I'll keep it 3D so we can take a look at this hologram. Okay, so now it's glowing pretty brightly. So, I mean, it's like a really bright hologram. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our tweak menu and we're going to dim this down because we don't need it to be so bright. So at 0%, you can't see, but let's just keep it at like 20%, maybe 10%. So here's what you've got in your level. Now what we can do is we can see even in play mode when I push down on the left joystick this is what it looks like. So I mean this is basically I mean that holographic fish bones I'm not sure that you would need that for anything but who knows. So so but basically you can do that with anything. I mean you can make, you know, doors out of it. You don't have to use actual stickers the way that I did it here. Um, but I just think it's kind of a little more interesting. So I'm going to get rid of this. So that's our hologram materials. Um, another cool one is our invisible material. You saw me standing on that in the intro. So we can just put this down. And when you're working in create mode, you know, it's here. You can see it. It just looks like it's clear glass or something. But when you switch it to play mode, now it's actually invisible material so you can do some pretty cool things in your levels there if you want to direct the way people go without them realizing that they're being directed so so that's our invisible material there's really nothing to tweak on here at all except whether it's dynamic or static and which layer it's in so our next material we talked about light matter our next one is the peach floaty. Now I'm going to have to pause here because this thing is going to float away. Now there's a peach and a pink. Now the peach floaty, let me just put them both out here so we can compare the two. Okay, so we've got pink and peach. Now if you notice, I'm going to unpause here. And there goes the peach floaty. So I'll pause, I'll rewind, there it's back again. Now I'm going to grab onto the peach and hit the play button. So now the peach is just slightly heavier. I'm not sure if you would say heavier or lighter. I mean, when you grab onto it, you're a little bit heavier than the peach floaty, so you will drag it down if you're hanging on to it, but it wants to go up. Now, so we'll just let it escape here. Now, the peach, on the other hand, if you push it, it'll go in whatever direction you fling this thing. So let's go this way, and it will keep that speed. You know, if you push it down, it'll go down. If you push it up, it'll just keep going up. So it doesn't really have too much momentum, and it'll slow down and it'll stop eventually. So you can use those for whatever you need them for. 
Um, I mean, unfortunately, I don't think you can give something this peach floatiness or this pink floatiness without it having this texture to it. So that might be something that we'll uh, add a footnote in here if we discover a way to do that. But basically, you can you can stick stickers onto these, but I think that they have to be this textured material. So so anyway. Maybe like anti-gravity tweaker or something would, would be able to do that to anything. So, um, moving on here, we get to our sticker panel. So now the sticker panel is pretty cool. And we're actually going to use the sticker because it's pretty useful. So what do we got here? Let's do, who's this guy? Happy Crab. Here we go, a Happy Crab. So... This one I'm actually going to make long so that we can see what's going on here. Move him back. So I stick him down, and basically he looks just like the sticker. It's actually a little bit brighter than what the sticker actually is, so you can actually come in here and tweak it. And so let's make it like 50%. There, that's, I'd say 50% brightness is probably the actual sticker. So this is how the sticker is actually designed. So now you can see that it's definitely stuck on the end of this 3D thing that's in the same shape. But if we go into the play mode, all it is is just this sticker floating around. However, this one's got some funkiness going on. Can't tell what that is. So maybe it's probably a better idea to just have this be a uh, two-dimensional. And then you've just got this crab here, and he looks like he could actually be a... A decoration instead of a sticker so and he's actually got physical properties so you can attach him to things and have him do things and animate him so it's kind of a cool thing and the other thing you can do too is you can make you can make them kind of transparent like I did with the skulls in the intro and then you can make a lot of ghosty things that float around your levels too so cool way to add some interest so Let's get rid of this guy. I think that's about it. We do have the... In the last episode, we talked about the wind material, but this wall jump surface is pretty much what it says. Um, this is just... used to be something special that you would get in the DC Comics pack. Um, maybe this is from that. Maybe I've just got it because I had that. Um, but you can turn anything into a wall jump surface now using uh, tweak menus and things like that. So, but, you know, this is something where if you want to use this, it actually has a pretty cool look to it with this uh, electrical look. You can change the colors of these pretty easily like we talked about in a different video. So let's do that. And so then you can make it kind of match and, you know, you can just use that for effects or you can actually use it for a wall jump surface. And uh, so that's basically it. So that's, that's our special materials episode. So hopefully this was helpful. You can uh, always refer back to this if you forget what any of these mean. So be sure to like the video and subscribe for more. And we'll catch you next time.